bit of fair weather DIY today, certainly for the first hour. What I need to do is drill a hole in the stone wall at the back here to take the soil pipe from the stack. We'll be working out there a bit later. Along here with a good fall on it to where in the future I may, hopefully, get around to putting a, a non-suite up here on the top floor. Just makes sense to do it all now while we've got the scaffolding out. Fortunately, we've got 100 mil of Kingspan here, which was off cuts. So we should be able to lift all this out and create a space here for our pipe to run along. You can see here, this is just a, a binder over the top of the joist. It's basically the lowest point I can go to, to go through the wall. So that's the point I'm gonna use, so I date them and then work back. So what I'm thinking is to start us off with, if we're using the drill, riding this along the top of the timber, the timber is level. So that should take us through a good point. So we'll set the pilot up in this, do the initial drill. That'll give us a small pilot hole. My plan then is to take a, a one meter and just do a hole all the way through. Then I know roughly where I'm coming through on the outside. I think this could work. That should just about get us through the wall. That should be just fine. The poor old heroic Titan gave up um, a few weeks back. It's perfectly fine on drill mode, uh, but it's just got no hammer function anymore. But the nice thing is we don't actually need a hammer function for the core. So I can still use this to do the uh, fair share of the work. Chances of keeping this straight on the way out. A slim to none. Right, let's go and see where that came through. Hopefully, not through somewhere where we don't want it. That's about right. Hopefully, what well, that means we can also come in for the last little bit from the core from this side. That just makes sure we haven't got any blowout on the stones. Then from here, our fall. Oh, we could do with being a bit lower, to be honest. Because we need to come across just under that sill. Ideally, somewhere between the sill and the lintel. I think that's gonna be too steep. Uh, actually, the bottom of the pipe will be here. So I think that bit is kind of, is it is what it is. We'll have to work with it. That should be the last of the hammering needed put some music on and go on with it With all good intentions, that's not going to work. Our pilot hole came through right on the mortar gap. So it's actually just widening and not staying central. So I think we're going to have to just go for it really steady from the inside. When we get near the outside, I might just come around because I can see we're still a little way off actually. Um, and then I might just kind of come out and just chip out the last little bit. It's likely because we've got an elbow coming out here, we're going to have to enlarge the hole for the first, I don't know, 40 mil or so to accept the socket size, so it's gonna be a bit wider. We're gonna need a new drill. Look at this. 
SDS graveyard in here. It's broken, weak, mighty. Before you say that SDS drills have no place in drilling cores, I can assure you that's not the case. And it's broken up past drilled holes, taken rendering off, broken off tiles. You know, and 50 quid after five, six years is okay. So with that in mind, I've just bought another one, although it's a bit bigger. But like with every tool, there's always some better gear out there. And that Hilti I borrowed last year certainly did a great job. And the dust extraction was pretty awesome on that. But if you're only going to drill a handful, then an SDS drill is all you need. Now I've got this cordless one. It's only 18 volt and it's really only good for drilling holes. It drills holes pretty quick. You know, it'll break tiles out of a bathroom or something, but it's obviously got no way near the strength it needs for this sort of job, nor is it going to break away through pathways for hours on end. I've got the big breaker for that, so there was no point in getting another similar size drill in, as a mains version. So this one's a bit bigger, and it's probably more like the sort of thing that we want to use for bigger drilling or breaking off render just general demo work. I've looked at the outside, here's a look at what it looks like out there. It's a bit dark. You can see that we're almost there, but because, like I said earlier, because that pilot was coming through a mortar gap, we can't drill the last bit from the outside coming in. Uh, nor could we have started from the outside right at the beginning no way we would have ended up coming in exactly where we needed. Well, I say that's a success. Pretty neat hole, no tear out or blow out at the back here. And hopefully by tomorrow we can then come back in and see how well that elbow fits. And we might have to do a little bit of carving away to get that to fit nicely. But a good day of breaking drills, buying drills, and making holes. This is what happens when you don't do it properly. The electricians, years ago when we moved in, drilled this purely from the out from the inside with no access outside or at least they didn't to start with, drilled through, they blew out the whole of this stone. And then when that stone, or well, some of it, fell down, smashed the glass roof of the porch, and they didn't put any fixings in. So all it is, is just some sort of construction adhesive. And obviously that's failed, and it's created like this perfect roost for jackdaws. And what hasn't helped is now all of this. In five years, this has all happened, which is why rigid, in, rigid ducting is always a bit better. But if you do have to use flexible, this isn't the way to do it. I'm afraid I gave in. I've ended up using plastic here. Um, everything else on the roof I've managed to keep either original or a, a brand new version in metal. Now this little run that comes out, it's basically going to be plastic inside the building, which is fine. Where it comes out and comes across in a short run to this cast iron stack, I just couldn't bring myself to spend hundreds of pounds on new cast iron. And even if I was using the old style, I'd have a horizontal join there. So I'd have a whole bunch of um, joints and also brackets. So I guess it's a bit of a compromise, but all things come down to budget in the end. But also the fact I can get it all in in one run nice and lightweight easy to use and also easy to transition from inside to outside so apart from you and me by the time this is all painted i don't think this decision will be keeping me up at night Well, we got there in the end, 
possibly a 125 core might have saved us a little bit of hassle there, but it's all in. Right, the rest of the pipe work on the inside I can do when it's dark outside. Uh, and we need to go through in plastic and get a Durgo on the end for now until we've got toilets and things in there. Now we need to jump onto the car sign. That's not going to be quite so easy, but that's for another future video. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time.